Okay, uh, so we're going to be talking about managing Kafka the easy, the easy way with uh, the help of uh, Play, Akka, and Curator. Let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm a principal engineer at Yahoo. I've worked on real-time analytics pipelines and currently working on reporting for Gemini, our search and native ads platform. I uh, worked at big data companies uh, in the Bay uh, using both open, open source as well as enterprise solutions and I've, I've worked with Scala at various companies in the Bay. Now how many of you are already using Kafka in production? All right, that's like 60, 70 percent of you. Uh, and how many of you are looking to use Kafka in production? Okay, the rest of you. Okay. Um, uh, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to spend very little time uh, look, uh, doing an overview of Kafka. I assume everyone knows what Kafka is. Uh, some of the operational challenges from my perspective uh, and why should you use Kafka Manager and how it works internally. So let's take an example cluster here. We have a three node cluster and we want to create a topic called test with three partitions with a replication factor of two. Uh, so you can see we have P0, P1, and P2. Those are the three partitions. Um, here you can see what the JSON uh, representation might be for the partition assignments, uh, which you can see for partition zero, we have uh, brokers one and two. Right here we have R1, R2 for P0, where, where broker one is the leader. The leader is responsible for all reads and writes to that partition and the, the other replicas pull the leader for updates. And uh, you, you see that you have uh, the, the producers on this side and, and the consumers on this, on this side. Uh, and the consumers are going to be talking to, always going to be talking to the leaders. Uh, and the producers are always going to be writing to the leaders. So this is a high level overview of how a topic is, looks like uh, on, a, on a Kafka cluster. So some of the operational challenges around Kafka are related to skew. Uh, one form of skew is data skew. So the data being written to the, the cluster, to the topics, um, may, may not be evenly distributed across all your partitions. So this can happen if you're using partitioning by key or value, uh, and this manifests in, in, in the, the network I.O. So network I.O. On, on some of your hosts will be really high and your other hosts will be very low. Right, and so there's no easy way to spot this without looking at, looking at the actual sizes of, e, of each partition. Uh, another source of data skew could be that some of the some of the messages that you're writing to the partitions are really small, while others are really large, and so there's no way for for, for you to really um, distribute the load evenly un unless you look at the size of the partitions uh, and do do some sort of batching on your own. Another operational challenge around Kafka is leader skew. So this is something that isn't a problem if you already have automatic uh, preferred leader election enabled in Kafka. Uh, this is this is goes back to these uh, leaders that we have here, one, two, and three. It's it's entirely possible for for some out for some reason there's an outage and the the third broker the broker three becomes a leader here, but it's not the preferred leader. So in Kafka, you, you have to run the preferred leader election or have that enabled where it can do it automatically, right? Um, so when you don't have it enabled automatically, this is what, what happens to your network I.O., right? So you have a bunch of brokers where, which have uh, leaders on them and you have a bunch of brokers that have very, very few leaders on them. So your network I.O. is not even across your cluster. And as soon as you run preferred le leader election, all the, all the network I.O. normalizes. Another source of uh, uh, skew is, is replica skew. So let's say you have a 10 node cluster uh, and you have n number of topics that are uh, distributed across the, those, cl uh, those nodes. And you add a five more nodes, so now you have 15 nodes, but the, the, the five new nodes have no data on them right now, right? Because the partitions need to be uh, reassigned such that they use the new, new set of brokers. So this is called, uh, uh, this is called the reassignment. Uh, part partition reassignment. Uh, and first, you need to generate the, the set of partitions with the 15 brokers before you reassign them. So again, this is this, the same kind of uh, network I.O. that you would see when you don't have a replica 
uh, evenly distributed. Another reason you, you may not have replicas evenly distributed is if you have uh, uh, 10 uh, brokers and your, your, the number of partitions you've created for the topic is like two, right? So how are you gonna evenly divide two uh, partitions across 10, 10, 10 nodes, right? So that's another source of, uh, of uh, replica skew. So as soon as you run uh, um, reassignment, which, which is what the spike is, where it's, it's copying all the data across all the brokers, uh, the network IO after the operation is done normalizes across your, uh, across your cluster. So think of Kafka Manager as a mission control for Kafka, except for less complicated, right? Uh, out of the box, you get all the functionality you would get uh, from the Kafka command line utilities, uh, except for you have a nice UI to do this with, right? So let's quickly look at the, the UI so I can uh, put some context around what these things are. All right, so let's see. Okay, so this is the, the broker list view. This lists all the brokers that are, that are um, available uh, and all the metrics associated with these brokers. So this is one of our production clusters. As you can see here, you have bytes in and bytes out. Uh, it's doing, uh, in the last minute, 100, 260 megabytes in and two gigabytes per second out, all right? So that's about 18 gigabits that's going through this cluster right now. Um, we look at the topic view here, uh, and the topic view essentially gives you the, the, this basic information of, about, about the topic. Uh, it also tells you if there are any topic, any, any, any uh, partitions which don't have the, the preferred replica as the leader. And so, as you can see, there's, there are about 12% of the, of the partitions don't have uh, the preferred replica uh, as, uh, as the leader. Um, and it, it tells you if there's any broker skew or broker, uh, the broker spread essentially tells you how many, what percentage of your brokers is the topic spread across, All right? Uh, so these are just basic metrics that you would need to optimize the way that you have the topics laid out on your cluster. Some of the operations you can do, uh, delete to topic or add partitions, you can update the configuration, you can run a reassignment uh, on, the, on the topic, uh, you can generate partition assignments. So if I were to click on this, uh, you, you would see this. And this is basically a, a confirmation page where you can uh, select which topic or which set of brokers you want to uh, put this topic on. So let's say if you had an operation where you have 10 hosts and you want to add a new host and remove one of the old hosts, right? So you would basically go to this page, unselect the one you want to remove, add the one that you want to want to move the, the, part, the, the new data to, uh, add the new one that you have added uh, in the list and regenerate the partitions and then go back to this page here and, and run, the, run the partition assignment. And, and this is what the update uh, configuration page looks like. So you don't have to go look up all the different config options for Kafka. They're all just listed out here and you can just fill in whatever you need and, and update, update the configuration for that topic. So let's go back to the, the presentation. Um, a few other things that you get with the uh, uh, Kafka Manager are, are when two concurrent uh, updates are happening, if two users are trying to modify the same exact topic config at the same time, the command line utility would just let that happen, right? So uh, the second user would not see what the change the first user had applied, and the second change would just override the, the first change, right? So it, with Kafka Manager, uh, we can uh, gate the updates because we can keep keep a track of the Zenode version that we had when we read the topic the, the, the initial topic config, right? So this, this this makes it a little safer to update topic configuration if if you know that two people cannot overwrite each other's changes, right? Um, another thing that you get with Kafka Manager is the ability to block generate assignments command for topics that are currently undergoing reassignment. So what happens or what could happen? is if you have a topic, let's say, that has a replication of three, and you generated new partition assignments for it uh, and ran the reassign partitions command, uh, while it's undergoing the, the reassignment, 
the number of replicas that are assigned to a partition could jump from three to five because it may be moving data between brokers, right? So temporarily, its replication factor, uh, as far as Kafka knows it, is five because there's no place where it stores the actual value of the replication factor. It's entirely determined by, based on the number of uh, replicas that are assigned to a partition, right? So if you generated assignments at that time, all of a sudden your assignments would, would uh, generate with a replication factor of five instead of three like you want it, right? So we can gate this because in Kafka Manager, we know what topics are currently going, undergoing reassignment. So Kafka Manager internally is a, a, a Play framework application. So all the UI is based on Play. Uh, the Play framework um, is, all the controls are written in Play, of course and the controllers are interacting with a class called Kafka Manager, which provides an API to the actor hierarchy. So there's a clear separation between the UI and the actual functionality. So at any point, we can replace the UI with any other UI or put it un uh, under a REST API if we wanted to. Um, all the interactions with Zookeeper are done using uh, Apache Curator. The way we manage state uh, in Kafka Manager is to store it in Zookeeper. We didn't want to um, introduce yet another data store to keep configuration information about the clusters that you want to add to Kafka Manager. So every time you add a new cluster, we actually store that information in Zookeeper, and every time you generate a partition assignment, we save that in inside a Zookeeper. Uh, for Kafka itself, all the state is in Zookeeper, and what we do is we use curators, tree, tree, tree cache, and the path children cache uh, patterns to actually cache Zookeeper state in memory. Right, so we don't have to make calls to Zookeeper every time we want to see the number of brokers that are currently in the cluster. Right, we, we query this in-memory cache, that, and this is a, a very great pattern that uh, is available through Curator, another reason why we're using it. So the actor model that we've defined has a logical separation between command and query processing. So this is inspired by uh, CQRS, if you were, guys were here uh, for Scala by the Bay, you may have heard of some CQRS talks, uh, and this is essentially the pattern that we're using here. Uh, we have separate uh, processing for commands and, and queries, so when we want to make extensions to Kafka Manager, it's easy to do because we know what, hap what, what we need to do when we want to add a command functionality uh, or, or a, a query functionality, and command query basically means the, the, the right side is the command side and the query side is the, is the read side of the, of the functionality. This allows us to, to uh, build some interesting abstractions on top uh, to make things easier to, to extend Kafka Manager itself. So we can create a base actor uh, which is responsible for processing the actor request and the actor response. And then we can create a base command actor which extends the base actor and all it's doing is processing a command request. And then we can do the same thing with the query side. We can create a base query command actor which processes the query request as well as a command request. And then we can use these abstractions to build up our actor hierarchy. The act so we start with a um, Kafka manager actor which is responsible for instantiating uh, all the uh, other actors. So Kafka manager actor is what connects to Zookeeper, gets the cluster information, and instantiates all the cluster manager actors. The cluster manager, so we have a, cl a cluster manager actor for every cluster that you've defined in Kafka Manager. The delete cluster actor is responsible for cleaning up state in Zookeeper. So when you go in there and remove a cluster, uh, we have all the generated, uh, generated partition assignment uh, information stored in Zookeeper. So when you delete a cluster, this delete cluster actor goes in there and cleans up that state that, that's left over when you delete the cluster. Uh, the cluster manager actor itself instantiates three other actors. The broker view cache actor, the Kafka state actor and the Kafka command actor. So all changes to Zookeeper are, are, go through the Kafka command actor, which is the right side of the, of the CQRS um, uh, pattern. And all reads for state uh, go to Kafka state actor. And the broker view cache actor essentially is all the views that you see in the UI are maintained in this actor. So this actor periodically queries the Kafka state actor for the current state and builds the necessary views. It's also responsible for doing all the JMX querying to all the brokers and uh, merging that data into its views. So when, when we look at the metrics, that's, that's the actor that's responding with the data. So 
So some of the work that is currently going on is um, uh, related to smart reassignment. So when you generate partition assignments right now, it's entirely possible that you move data from one set of uh, brokers to another set of hosts because when the, the, the command itself randomly picks a broker to start from, right? So it doesn't take into consideration that there are, there is a set of brokers that already have this data and they, they should not move, it should not be moved to another set of brokers, right? Uh, and this is where we want to reduce data movement and, and not have to worry about too much network I.O. happening, especially if you're doing high amounts of network I.O. like 18 gigabits, right? Um, you don't want to move data around when you don't need to. Uh, per partition log segment sizes, uh, is, is a work in progress as well uh, that will allow us to see the actual size of the data on disk for each partition. So this is where you'll be able to see what the data skew actually is across your partitions for a topic. And consumer offsets are a, a feature that have been requested by a lot of people. Uh, and there are two PRs for that, are, that are already there for this feature and we're just going through figuring out which one uh, we're going to merge and just going through the, the code review process right now. There are a few other features that uh, we'd like to have, um, and we'd love to have more con uh, contributions to Kafka Manager. It's it's open sourced. It's on on our GitHub page, um, and we're would be more than happy to have more more co uh, contributions. So some of the contributors that we've already had are from Meta Markets. Jisoo Kim, Jian, and Alexander have worked uh, with us. Uh, collaboratively to add new features to Kafka Manager uh, and a few other people. So contributions are welcome. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. So the question was, uh, what is meant by the consumer offsets work? So we basically are, are going to add a, add a UI page where you can see uh, the list of consumers and where where they are in consuming uh, data from the topic. So you can see what, what offset, offset they're currently at. This is basically there to identify lagging consumers. <laughs> 